it does a cool kind of phase transition and it sounds clean and it, it works. Yo, what is up guys? It is your boy DJ Rick Webb and today I got something. The brand new Pioneer DDJ 200. Disclaimer! This was bought with my own money. Pioneer is not paying me to make this video, nor has this been given to me for free. So, the Pioneer DDJ 200 sets out to be the ultimate beginner DJ controller in, in my eyes is what I see Pioneer trying to push with this. A lot of people have been arguing the point that the DDJ SP3 only cost, I think, like 80 bucks more or something like that. But the big difference between this and the DDJ SP3 is that the SP3 requires a laptop to use it. The DDJ 200, you can use this with your smartphone. So your Android, your Apple, your iPad, whatever you got, you can use the DDJ 200 here with that. So just reading the box here, you, you can use eDJing or you can use the DJ app, which is that is D-J-A-Y. I actually already use this app on my iPad for uh, a backup source of mixing. The audio mixing on it is actually really good too for like cocktail hour and stuff. So theoretically what the DJ 200 allows you to do is take that DJ app and instead of using the touch controls on the iPad or iPhone or whatever, it gives you some physical hardware to actually DJ with which makes this perfect for beginner DJs because believe it or not, a lot of people don't have a laptop available of their own. A lot of people have to actually buy a laptop. And unfortunately, nowadays, you either need a MacBook or a pretty souped up uh, Windows computer to be able to run Virtual DJ, Serato, Rekordbox efficiently because of just the, the sheer demand of the program. So now let me break down to you guys what this video, how it's gonna work if you guys have not watched one of the product unboxings and reviews. What's gonna happen is I'm going to be unboxing the DDJ200 right here, right now and I'm going to show, set it up and actually do a first impressions on it. Then, I'm going to come back a week later after using the device and give you guys an official review of how the device is functioning for me and actually using it to be able to DJ with. So that is how this video is gonna work out. Let's jump into unboxing this unit. All right, so here's the box right here. Very simple. And we slide it out. That's all for the box. So in the box here, we have the manual and also we have some cables in here. So let's check that out. Cable-wise, we're provided a USB cable, which is really just a printer cable. You got a USB on this side and USB on this side. This is just really a printer cable is all it really is. And then we also have here, this is our splitter. This is not your ordinary headphone jack splitter. What this is, is a Y cable. And what a Y cable does is it takes this headphone jack signal right here. You got a left signal and a right signal. And what the software does is it makes that left signal either your master output or your headphone output. Say the left channel will be your mono output to your speakers, which comes out of the left side. And then the right side is then your mono output for your headphone jack, allowing you to be able to cue tracks up without affecting the master output. Very ingenious uh, way of utilizing this software. Now this is nothing new. Y cables have been around for a while. In fact, back in like 2014 when I first started DJing, I picked up a Y cable to use with the DJ app on my iPad to be able to do the same thing. So. That's, that's all it is really. So we have a little thing for the DJ app, so you can go download the DJ app for your device. And then we have eDJing right here, which is for both Apple and Android. So that is good that you can also use this on any Android device as well. And then we have the garbage of the manual that no one reads. So moving on, as we can unbox here, take this foam off, throw that off to the side, and we can pull out our DDJ 200. This thing is tiny. So just some notable first things here about the DDJ200. The jaw wheels are not loose at all. They stop almost instantly as soon as you let go of the platter. Um, all of these are buttons. These are not soft touch buttons. These are all physical touch buttons. The tempo sliders have a good amount of friction to them. They're not loose at all. The fader is also not loose at all. It's a very uh, friction fader. It does not slide very easily. Same thing with the faders, all very similar feel. Knobs, plastic knobs, 
good feel with the knobs, and again, all buttons as well. So now, because I already have DJ on my iPad, let's go ahead and get my phone, and let's download the eDJing app, because it is for Android and Apple, and let's hook it up. So, let me give you guys a little bit of a disclaimer right now of what's going on. So, I use an Android phone. Right now, as it stands, Android, the Pioneer has their own software called Wii DJ. I forgot to mention that they have their own software called Wii DJ. Um, as well as you got eDJing for Android and Apple, and then you got DJ, which is the app that I'm already using on my iPad at for like a backup source and also for cocktail mixing. So on Android right now, I tried downloading the eDJing app and uh, there's a bug of some sort that when I have it connected to the Pioneer DDJ 200, it will not output from the headphone jack. No, no, for some weird reason, when the app is open and we're connected to the DDJ 200, it will not output to the headphone jack. It outputs to my phone speakers. That's the bug right now. I don't know if that's gonna get resolved or whatnot, but uh, maybe it'll get resolved after this video. But right now on your Android options, it's not looking good. You can DJ, but you can't pre-cue anything, and you also cannot connect to a speaker because the only output is your headphone or is your phone speakers. So you can DJ off your phone speakers on Android, but that's the only option. Now on the Apple side, I use an iPad, but it's the same thing for an iPhone. I download, or I, I hooked it straight up to my DJ app because I already have it downloaded, and this thing works flawlessly. And I am blown away at how awesome it is to use, and it's actually pretty, it, it's awesome. For, for From a beginner DJ standpoint, it's awesome. So I'm going to show you how that gets hooked up real quick um, using the DJ app. That's my personal favorite uh, app out there. It runs smooth as can be. Um, I'm not really going to dive into the Wii DJ app because personally I like using software that I like and I already use DJ so we're gonna I'm gonna show you DJ and how this all hooks up. Okay so here we go we have the Pioneer DDJ 200 you can see my reflection right there in the iPad. To power it you plug that USB into either a, a phone brick block adapter like this it doesn't really matter what kind it is. You could also use something like this, which is just a portable battery bank. This is a beefed out one, but you can use anything like that that provides power to a standard USB phone charger to power this device. Now, on the iPad, we plug in our Y connector. Shout out Ohio University Bobcats, my alumni. And we make sure our Bluetooth is on. Load it up. I'm gonna turn it into landscape mode. It asks me split output enabled, and I'm gonna click OK because I do have split output enabled over here for both my master and my headphone jack. Unlock all the pro features, including thousands of effects. You don't need to do this, but you can go to DJ, you can unlock all the features with DJ Pro, maybe later. I actually have the DJ Pro app already downloaded the older version, um, but all you really need is this version right here because it has all the features you need. In the center of the DJ Pro app, you have your mixer, so if you wanted to just physically mix on here, you can do that via the touch screen. It's very handy, it's very nice. You have the waveforms here, so you can see the waveforms, and then you have some of the effects right here as well. One thing I wanna point out real quick, this flickering you see of these LEDs right here, that is because they are LEDs and we are filming them. They do not flicker in person. Right here is your MIDI Bluetooth. It is flashing right now showing you that it's not connected. So inside of the DJ app, how you connect it, you click the little yellow button at the top and it will pull down your setting menu right here. We're gonna click the settings icon. We're gonna scroll down here to MIDI devices. You guys can't really see this too well. And we are going to click on Bluetooth MIDI devices and it'll sh pop up with your DDJ 200. You're gonna click connect. We're gonna connect to it. All right, now that we're connected to it, our MIDI light is solid, showing that we have a solid connection between our DDJ 200 and our iPad. I haven't really explained this yet, but the way that this works is your iPad, your iPhone, is the device that's going to be outputting the audio via the Y cable. One for your master output, going to my Bluetooth speaker right here. One for your headphones, which is my headphones, my little earbuds right here. Because there is little to no lag when transferring MIDI over Bluetooth, but there is lag when transferring audio 
audio over Bluetooth. So some clever engineering from Pioneer to have the device actually output the audio so that way there's no lag in audio and there is the most minute ever lag when it comes to actually physically controlling it. And trust me, I have not noticed any lag at all sending MIDI signal. And as you can see right there, I already got a song loaded up and I could scratch away with it. First off, some settings you need to change real quick. Go into settings, go to general, scroll down to when you get to your tempo slider range and make sure it is set to 10%. It's gonna be default set to 25%, which is just really hard to actually use the faders and get your BPM dialed in. Uh, switch it to either 10% or 8%, something a lot lower, something a little bit more manageable with the range that you have on these tempo sliders, which is actually pretty good range. Very similar to the range you find on the Pioneer DDJ uh, SR2 and the DDJ um, SX3. So this is the DJ software right here. It's very easy to use. You have your BPM listed up here in the corner. You have your tempo sliders. Be sure to activate. There's a little music note beside the BPM tempo slider. Activate that. That basically is mixing key so that it locks the key so that you're um, here I'll demonstrate it with this song so this is a DJ God as falling in love again I'm gonna de deactivate the tempo so this is regular so I'm gonna play this song real quick and this is without the tempo lock engaged down, 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 down. all right so if you activate that little uh, music symbol beside the tempo that's going to do your key lock so now when you do your fader up and down it's going to sound a lot better and that right there just makes mixing sound a thousand times better when you're locked in key so i know on the we dj app it gives you options to control your performance pads down here because as you can see above this there is no option for like q loops rolls, slicers, there's none of those options on here. So in the Wii DJ app, you can shuffle between all four of those modes. But if you're using the DJ app like I like, and like I like using this app because like I said, this app has been out forever. It's not like a brand new app that Pioneer just developed. The DJ app is its own entity and this app is solid and has never failed me. So the way it works is your top row are loops. So as we go here. Different size loops, and then your bottom four are four cue points, which is pretty much all you need. When you establish cue points here, how you remove them is you just click the shift and you can remove them. Pretty simple. You do have a wonderful sync button, so if you want to sync between the two decks, there is a sync button as well. I would also like to point out that in the settings, when you first open up the settings, for split output, you can actually adjust your output level for both your headphones and your master. So if your headphones are too loud, you can quiet them down without affecting the volume of the master output. Very handy as well. Like I said, we got the jaw wheels here that we can play around with. We got our crossfader. We have our high, mid, and low control. And we have our cue buttons right here for our headphones. So we can cue deck one, or we can cue deck two, or we can just listen to the master in the center. Pretty helpful. And that's pretty much it, except for the one last thing, which is transition effect phase sync. So if you're a beginner DJ, the main focus you should be worrying about is crowd reading and learning what music to play for certain crowds. Forget learning how to mix at the start, this is my personal opinion, but if you're just learning how to crowd read and play from song to song, this is gonna make your life a thousand times easier. So if I wanna go from DJ falling in love with me to dynamite, the BPMs are not synced at all. I'm gonna adjust them so they're not synced. So this one's at 115, this one's at 126. They're completely off. This is just going to do a simple phase transition for you. You're not going to have to do anything. It's going to sound pretty good for transition. So we got this playing, this song's playing, and I want to transition over. So it does a cool kind of phase transition and it sounds clean and it, it works. So this was just a quick look at the basically setup and how it works and everything like that. I will be giving my full review here in two weeks, but initially, my initial first impressions right now, this is, this is killer.
This has all the essentials that you need as a beginner DJ to learn how to DJ. Like I said, it's got phase transition, it's got sync if you don't really know how to mix yet because you need to be focusing on crowd reading. I'll get into that in a different video on why I think that. But it's got everything you need to, to start DJing. It's got low, mids, and highs. It's got your, your cues so you can listen to the next songs that's coming up so you can think if that song's gonna mash or not. It's got little jog wheels that'll work perfectly fine. It's got your tempo sliders if you wanna start learning how to beat match and DJ. It's got four cue points if you're using the DJ app or you can use eight if you get the Wii DJ app. But I, I, I'm gonna stick with DJ, uh, the DJ app because I like it better. Um, it's got this cool phase transition so you really don't even need to do a transition. It'll do it for you. Uh, it's got simple loops. It's it, it's solid and honestly, anyways, I'll check back in with you guys in a couple weeks. What is up guys? I don't really remember last time I was filming with this, but um, it's been a lot longer than a few weeks. I've had this thing now for over a month. Over that period of the month, I haven't been like dedicating a lot of time to it, but I've definitely spent at least 12 hours DJing on this. Now, over the period of that month, I haven't really been spending a lot of time on this. It's kind of like one of those things. I come home, it's already set up here, and I just start playing away if I have a chance and I'm a little bored or I don't want to be doing stuff involving the company. I just go ahead and jump on here, basically. First off, this is incredible. I, I got I to gotta say, just, just off first hand, I, I like it. I like it a lot. So in the process of using this now for a little bit over a month, I have been, my brain has been turning of the possibilities with this controller. And I am, I got a lot of stuff to say about the usability and personally where I can see this controller being useful. So let's talk about the different levels of DJing out there and where this controller is useful. First off, we're going to talk about beginner DJs because that is what this controller is mostly designed for. This thing is stellar. It is killer if you have an iPhone or an iPad to be able to start DJing. Most of the people out there that have an iPhone have a large database of music already on their iPhone. So the fact that you can literally just transition to start DJing with your iPhone using the DJ app, personally, my favorite. I haven't used Wii DJ, but I, I like the DJ app. That's, that's, I've been using it for a long time. Like I said, the app's been out forever. So as a beginner DJ, that factor, as well as the fact that this has every basic feature you need to DJ. It's got the EQ, it's got your filter knobs, it's got your channel faders, it's got the crossfader, it's got your little turntables for you, it's got tempo sliders, it's got cue points, it's got loops, it's got play and pause buttons. That's all you need to basically DJ, that's all you need. Beyond that, Pioneer added this cool transition effect phase sync button which honestly makes life a thousand times even easier for beginner DJs out there because I'll get into this in a different video on beginner DJs and what I think you should be focusing on when you first start out but instead of focusing on learning how to beat match and all that fun stuff that's great stuff but really you should be focusing on crowd reading and learning what music to play for what people what genres what music works together and that's where the phase sync transition button works the fact that you can just push the fader over to the next song that is playing and it will sound pretty much clean oh and it's got the ability to use headphones and cue up the next song, another basic essentials of being a DJ. So for any beginner DJs out there that don't have a laptop yet, that's probably my only stipulation on this. If you already have a pretty good laptop out there, start looking at maybe something like an SB3, a DDJ SB3. This is more or less perfect for the beginner DJ that does not have a laptop and just has their iPhone or they have an iPad out there. It gives you the ability and a nice, usable layout to DJ. With the exception of that Android issue, which is still present with the EDJing app. Currently right now, the only real way to operate this is if you have an iPhone, if you have an iPad, if you have a, if you, have, you need an Apple device basically right now. I did forget to mention back when I originally filmed this, you can actually use this with Rekordbox as well. So if you did want to say use your iPhone to start and then you want to evolve to actually use a full record box suite. You can also use this with record box. So if you have a laptop, you can use this with record box as well. But like we said, for the extra like $80, you could get a DDJ SB3, which has a little bit more features than this. 
and it works directly with Redbox. But the benefit of this is the fact that it uses and but the benefit of this controller, the DJ 200 right here, is that you can use it with your iPhone or your iPad if you don't have a computer available. Now that gets me into my next point for intermediate and professional DJs out there. This unit is awesome for two reasons. First reason, it requires no power to use. And by no power, I mean you can use any little cell phone charger and be able to keep this thing running for hours. So that is great for a backup unit. So if you are out at an event and you lose complete power, you could pop this out and be ready and start DJing via your phone or an iPad and you're all set and ready to go. Even if you have maybe like an LD Systems Maui 5 Go or any sort of battery powered speaker that you can hook up to, you can start playing music as soon as you lose power. And I say that because a lot of us professional intermediate DJs out there are using controllers now at most of our events that require power. I'm talking like your Pioneer DDJ SX2, SX3, your SZs, your turntables, your uh, CDJs, all those require power. So in the case you lose power, you're down to just your laptop. And your laptop, personally, most laptops aren't gonna last more than two to four hours before they run out of battery. So I'd rather take the reliability of using my phone or using an iPad that I know is going to last a lot longer on power. Now I know I'm gonna get some comments about, I forget who makes it, I know Hercules makes one and there's another company that makes one, but it's just a little tiny mixer about yay big. It's got little tiny itty bitty jaw wheels and some faders and stuff that you can uh, use the control Serato and use the control virtual DJ and Hercules. Yeah, that's great because you can just throw it in your bag and all that fun stuff. But personally, I don't like the fact that everything is so tiny. It's so compact. It's easy to accidentally press a butt, another button. I don't, I don't like that. This unit right here is small. Yes, I mean, look, this is my, this is my head. It's very small of a unit, but it is a very usable layout. Everything on this is laid out in the same fashion as you've been always as a DJ. All of your EQ knobs are in the same order. They literally feel just like the same knobs I use on my SZ and my SX2s. The layout is basically the same as every controller out there. It's not compact squeezed into like a new form factor that you need to learn how to use. Your muscle memory is going to be very similar and I really like that for a portability standpoint compared to the very compact unit. So that was a complete unboxing first look and now a month later my official review on the Pioneer DDJ 200. When this first came out I was literally thinking about why in the world would anyone even want to buy this? Why wouldn't you just buy an SB3 or something like that? After having the unit in the office, using the unit now for a little bit over a month and actually checking it out, I want to keep this thing. It's super tiny, super compact, from a beginner DJ standpoint, this thing is awesome. It has all the features you possibly need to start DJing with. I honestly cannot give this thing enough praise. And like I said all the way at the beginning of the video, I am not sponsored in any sort of way by Pioneer to be making this review. I didn't get this unit for free. I bought this unit. I have this unit. I love it. So if you're a beginner DJ out there and you're looking for a controller to pick up, you don't have a laptop already, strongly recommend looking into this. I think it's right around $200 right now, which is pretty affordable if you're a beginner DJ. Oh, and one last thing. The main reason why I want to keep this, this is all in my personal opinion. Take it as it is. But I could throw this thing in my truck and say I'm out at a college party or I'm out hanging out with my boys at um, or having some sort of little party get together. Someone pitches me the idea of DJing. I could, uh, I could go grab this out of my car and start DJing and uh, not care if it gets ruined. I can hook this thing up to whatever speakers possible that are there. I can start playing music and rock the party out as always. So uh, that's kind of just my personal opinion on that. I really love the fact that it's pretty much disposable in a way. So yeah, that's that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing, this product review. If you did so, be sure to drop a like on this video. It really helps out the channel. As well as if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button. Like always, guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep the record spinning, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.